years old, that's enough for me, so. Anyway, I think Sharon's up to 47. and welcome back to another episode of the art of engineering and this is a very short episode and we're just looking very very quickly at my forays into some digital modes and obviously digital modes what what do you think of well you think of ones and zeros don't you you think of binary you think of digital circuits but it should be remembered that the uh, the original digital mode was the one that started it all. Continuous wave Morse code. Because you've got a one and a zero, just like a computer. And when you work this mode, you use the most powerful computer in the universe that we know of, and that's your brain. Well, not my brain. My brain's not a powerful computer, but some people have powerful computers in their heads. So, we're gonna have a look at some attempts at some CW work on this uh, very short foray into the digital modes. And we're also going to have a look at the uh, QRP Labs QDX kit that I've built. Now, you can go on the Facebook forum for this uh, QRP kit, QRP Labs kit. It's taken the uh, ham scene by storm and I think it's converted some people to the digital modes. And I've got to say, I know a lot of people don't like the impersonal aspects of FT8, the digital modes. There is JS8, so you can have a chat if you if you really want to, but the FT8 thing is largely about working different countries, exchanging signal reports, and logging it in the, in, in the logbook. But um, it should also be remembered that it's a great way of seeing what propagation is doing. It's always amazing to see how that technology works and the distances that can be covered. So. I, I am very excited by it. I can't see myself making it my main mode of communication, but uh, it's certainly a lot of fun. And, uh, and and building the kit was a lot of fun, and that's something that you all know I'm interested in at the present moment is the homebrew aspects of this hobby as well. So, and, and you've probably seen, it's rough and ready the way I do it. Um, it's very organic. It's not high quality builds. So you can come along on the journey with me and see the stuff ups as they occur. And um, I'm teaching you something about doing things properly as well by not following what I do a lot of the time <laughs> and showing you the pitfalls when you cut corners. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a cold drink and enjoy this episode. Hello CQ, hello CQ, hello CQ, hello CQ, hello CQ. Me calling CQ. CQ, CQ, 80 meters and listening. Well, there you have it. All the way to South Australia. 5 watts, double sideband. But still nobody answering. We are presently trying to have a quick chat to someone just across the ditch in New Zealand on a digital mode called FT8 and this is a little 5 watt transmitter and that is going to my very crudely constructed antenna outside and that's my little sky hook of an antenna and here we have the log from today so uh, we have a VK4 TJ John who I spoke to via the VK2 AAK Kiwi SDR radio and my Mooncake transmitter. And then we have some um, FDA contacts that were done just after the failure of my, uh, of my antenna when I'd done the repair. At this juncture in time, I probably should fess up what happened to the antenna. <laughs> when I put it up, I didn't fix the sections to stop it from collapsing. And normally squid poles, when they collapse under their own weight, not a problem. But with quite heavy wire that I've used and the traps, it kept collapsing under its own weight, God knows how many times, and I didn't learn from this lesson, and it was okay every time I did it, but eventually cracks started to appear and you know one of the one of the sections shattered. So I've had to go up there and do lots of very, very bodgy repairs, but 
you know, bit of PVC pipe, bit of tapes, and, you know, cable ties. It's, it's, you can sort it out. It's not a big deal. But if you use a squid pole in this situation, you might want to fix the section so that it can't collapse. Do something with them to stop them from collapsing, and, and it should last for a very long time. That's been my experience. My 9 meter one's been fine. Anyway, back to the video. I came in, thought, oh, I'll just switch it on, make sure it's all working like it should. And straight out of the box, we got Sardinia, 16,000 odd kilometers away on five watts. And we managed to do um, an FD8 to reunion. So FD8 mode, it's an automated mode essentially. And what it's doing is it's just saying, here I am. This is your signal. This is my signal. Best of luck. See you later. So it's not everyone's cup of tea. There's a lot of people that say it's not proper radio and all that sort of stuff. It's a great way of experimenting with propagation. It's a great way of seeing how far a QRP signal can go. And it's just one more thing to amuse yourself with in the expanded field of excitement that is amateur radio. As you can see here, New Caledonia, Japan. I don't count myself as a, as a huge DXer, obviously, uh, and I haven't got the best antenna system and I haven't got the best uh, of equipment. But you can see here already United States, Fiji, that Spain call happened on that antenna via single sideband the day after I put up that. Yes, it's that time in the video where I'm going to ask you to reach down, if you haven't already, and hit that subscribe button, and hit the like button, and drop me a comment. Tell me what you think of the video. Just having a little bit of a wander around the bands at the moment. Uh, tried a little bit of FT8, it was absolutely lousy. And so I thought, why not give uh, 80 meters CW a go? Because my um, Digimode's exploits were going terrible. And uh, got myself on the VK5 ARG, the South Australian online SDR radio, Kiwi SDR. And my five watts on the Oz QRP transceiver was getting me um, there no problem at all so I thought well the, and the band was quite quiet as well so I sent out a CQ and got an answer from a gentleman by the name of Grant um, ZL2 uh, Zulu Lima 2 Golf uh, Delta uh, and he was actually running 800 watts um, CW from his location in uh, Rangiora in, uh, in New Zealand so had a, a bit of a chat with him. Um, I'm still having difficulties with my flow of conversation when it comes to CW. He was a seasoned veteran at it by all accounts, uh, but very, uh, very patient with my um, efforts at CW. And we had a bit of a chat, a bit of QRN and, and uh, in QRM at my end, at times a bit of fading as well, but um, a very, very usable signal. So. Been digging around in the shack and uh, had a good afternoon. Uh, in a minute, I'll show you um, a few of the things that happened. I thought, well, hey, we'll have a look at what's happening on the 20 meter band. And straight away, um, got some really good DX, five watts from the uh, QDX, um, QRP Labs, QDX, Digimodes transceiver. So I was chuffed about that. And then I thought, hey, why not? We've done something new. Let's do something old. So I broke out my, um, uh, chocolate box, box receiver, which we've um, done videos on in the past, and then our Mooncake transmitter, which is a two transistor QRP transmitter, which I'm going to make five watts very shortly, so it'll become even more useful to me. At the moment it puts about sort of 400, 450 milliwatts out, and of course the homebrew Bunnings key, also a video. Had a great time sending out CQs. And luckily, I was listening on the VK2 AAK SDR radio, and I think that's in Forster, and so it's in New South Wales. And just in case the receiver was being unreliable or I wasn't quite on frequency, and as luck would have it, was well, bad luck would have it, but also good luck, receiver didn't help me out this time, but I got a very clear signal on a gentleman by the name of John in uh, Toowoomba about uh, 840 k's away. And John and I proceeded to have a good old rag chew down the bottom end of 80 meters. And uh, he had a bit of a joke about uh, how old school my uh, setup was. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a good uh, QSO. And it ended with uh, my wife SMSing me and saying it's dinner time. So I had to, uh, had to skedaddle. We're trying to put out some more um, 
CQs here at this end. I want to operate CW. I'm already feeling more confident with the CW now. It, it took a little while, but uh, it's starting, I think, to come together. So I think it's just one of those things you just gotta, you gotta do um, if you wanna get better at it. I've also had a uh, complete QSO, and there's a video on my channel via the Mooncake uh, transmitter and the chocolate box receiver. And I spoke to a gentleman by the name of Adrian VK2WF. So link below, I'll put a link below to that QSO because Adrian is one of those people that has amazing antenna setup. He basically said, hey, if there's anyone in the world that could have received that signal that you were sending me, it was me. And I'm thinking, wow, is that true? And of course, when I had a look at the antenna set up, uh, yeah, I was amazed. He's got this broadcast quality vertical, uh, set of vertical antennas for both the top band at 160 and 80 meters as well. And just absolutely amazing. So I had a look at all the information he sent me about the setup. It was it, just incredible. So he chased me up and down the band as well because we were drifting all over the place. We've kind of got the drift under control. It's not perfect, but I realized I've got two switches on this thing and one controls the oscillator and controls the PA stage. And basically got to leave the oscillator going, which sometimes causes a bit of an issue with the receiver. So we have so much to learn on, on, on the uh, roll your own front. Everything here Barring this side anchor here and, and this uh, meter here is home built. So the OzQRP, um, I'll, look, I'll, I'll take the phone down and I'll show you some of the stuff that's in here. Um, just so you can get an idea of uh, how the station has evolved. Well, to start with, we built this, uh, this little two transistor transmitter. And it is, I'll just show you the insides of it, very rudimentary. And I've left plenty of room in here, so I'm going to put a, a five, uh, five watt final stage in this. So you'll be seeing that shortly. And it's a, a variation of the Pixie transceiver, but just the transmitting section of it. So very happy with how this is going. Like I said, we've done some QSOs on it. After I built this, I started also at the same time playing around with this chocolate box receiver, which you heard a little bit of SSB from at the beginning of this uh, video. So it's got a little switch on the side here that uh, switches between two ceramic resonators, whether I want to listen to uh, the sideband uh, portion of part of the sideband portion of 80 meters or the lower end of 80 meters for CW. So that was what was happening early on. We got ourselves a Baofeng UV 10R. I don't use it for transmitting. Look, let's face it, VHF 2 meters doesn't really interest me that much. It may down the track. Um, and then we built ourselves our uh, OzQRP uh, kit, and uh, I've done both double sideband and uh, CW QSOs on that galore, and it's a very functional radio, 150 odd bucks to, to buy in kit form, very easy to put together, a lot of uh, surface, well, all the surface mount devices are preloaded on the board, you've just got to wind toroids and put some through hole components on, so it wasn't too bad a build, I had some issues, but uh, a lot of support from um, Leon, uh, Leon Dolps. So, uh, yep, we uh, built that and then loved it so much, we got ourselves the 40-meter uh, version. And I've done lots of QSOs on this one as well. So that was the two uh, builds that were kits. And then we also got ourselves a QCX Mini, which we managed to destroy um, or partially destroy. Uh, so my mate Chris is uh, going to try and resurrect that. And we have the um, uh, digital Digimodes transceiver. And uh, that has been a huge amount of fun. Great little kit to build. This thing, it's five watts, five odd watts coming out of this thing. Um, and of course, the FT8 mode was designed by a, a physicist who's an astronomer and is into radio astronomy. The mode was based on a, a, a technology that's used to find weak signals from space. So it's very high tech. Wow, you're still here. Thank you for staying for the entire video. I'm terribly sorry it's a little bit shambolic and all over the place. Haven't had as much time to plan and think about what I'm doing because back at university. I'm hoping that the next video is a little bit shorter. I said it was going to be a short one, it turned into a long one. And also a little bit more instructional. So the next one will probably be me taking my uh, mooncake transmitter here, the one we did the QSO to Toowoomba on and uh, making it five watts so that uh, it's a little bit punchier. I think once you get up to around five watts of CW, you've got a good chance of making a uh, QSO. Anyway, I shall see you in the next video.
73 from VK2AOE.